Um, you know, there was a ton of good. I thought uh, at times we looked really explosive at, at, on offense. At, at times we looked completely out of joint. Um, little mistakes here and there on offense cost us a couple drives. They did a good job keeping the ball away from us. Uh, defensively, kind of the same thing. And I told the team after after the game they they play really well, really well, really well, and uh, give up a chunk play and really well and give up a chunk play. And uh, overall, I thought the defense hung in there, uh, but we can be better. Um, some dumb plays on special teams that I know are getting coached because I'm in the meetings and listening to them, and um, those things need to get better. Uh, you know, my message to the team, I don't mind sharing with you. Uh, it's been an interesting camp in that uh, we got a lot of new guys on the team, on the staff. Those guys see our team and the talent on our team, and they're really, really confident in who we are. Uh, got some old guys that have battled through a lot of adversity and been a good team before and haven't won. Um, as a head coach, you got to balance, you know, telling them they're a great team to keep the confidence up with being honest with them and making sure we're continuing to get better. Um, this team can be a great team. It's not right now. And that was my message to them. Um, so that, that puts us in a perfect position to have the potential to be good, but know that we got a lot of work to do and a lot of things to fix. When, Questions? What was the tone and tenor in the, in the, in the halftime locker room? Like, if you came off the field and I think you were pretty fired up, did that continue in the locker room? Yeah, you know, part of that was deserved and part wasn't. I, you know, we only got four possessions on offense in the first half. I didn't realize that until after the game. Um, and we had the ball down there again, took a strip, strip sack. Can't do it. Um, when we get to league play, when you get the ball past the other team's 40, you got to be aggressive but careful to not ever give up points. And those type of plays that give up points uh, can be backbreakers in close games. Glad it wasn't today. Um, we're still finding our way a little bit. Uh, I love the guys I have on my office and staff. They're bright. They're doing a great job coaching. I think you can see the improvement by position. Uh, we're still figuring it out together, and the team's still figuring it out together, and the players are still figuring it out together. And um, in some ways, I thought we made some big strides from last week, um, but there's still a lot to fix. Scott, who called the plays in the first half and who called the plays? I'm not ever going to get into that. But uh, all I'll say is we got a lot of smart people on the staff, and the more we can cooperate, the better we're going to be. Uh, the catch Trey made there, just, I mean, that, that moment, how big was that? Did it feel like allowed your team to breathe a little bit on that and get that drive going? Yeah, I mean, uh, the team did a great job of keeping its composure. Um, but it was way closer than we wanted to at a couple points. And, you know, in those moments, you've got to have players step up sometimes. And we haven't always gotten that. And Trey stepped up, Garrett stepped up and got made a big play for us. Uh, Tommy stepped up and made a big play for us. Uh, obviously, the running backs did. Um, thought the O-line blocked really well down the stretch. So, hey, you, you, <laughs> we've been in that situation a lot where we've been in a close game that can go either way. And sometimes you just need the guys to do what they've been trained to do. Well, is Anthony better than you originally thought? Uh, we'll see. I don't want to crown him yet. I know how Nebraska is. Um, there's, there's no need to clear space to retire his number or anything right now, but he had a good day. You like that combination, though, of him and AJ, and what do they do for you out there today? Yeah, honestly, I, I, I thought both those two ran great. Um, Gabe Irvin's a fine football player. He deserves to play, too. Ramir Johnson was one of our workhorses last year, um, and he's still getting caught a little in between, and we got to make sure there's packages for him. I, I, I love that kid and what he's poured into this program, and he's a really good football player. Um, we're running at skill position. We're running at a little bit of a problem. We've got a lot of guys that deserve to play. Uh, but I'm really proud of AG and AJ today. Um, both those guys are going to be good players around here. We've got to make sure we're using all of them. What was the squib kick supposed to be look like? Thanks for calling it a squib kick. I meant to open with a joke about that. Uh, <laughs> We have the smartest football fans in America, and I want them all to know that was not an onside. Uh, we, we practice that all the time, that if we get a 15-yard penalty on the PAT, rather than kick it out of the end zone and give them the ball, uh, we try to squib it and bury them inside the 20. And our aim has been off on a couple of those, and we hit somebody. So I'm um, glad that wasn't a penalty kick in a soccer game to win a game or you to hit the goalie in the face. It's, got, it's been a while since you guys have won a game. How nice is it to have 
a good feeling in this place and how, how, what can this do to the team to kind of give them some positive reasons? Yeah, you know, I hadn't even ever thought, really thought of that, and I know that's the reality. Uh, but this is a different team, and we got to make this team a team. It doesn't have a lot to do with losing close games down the stretch last year. It doesn't really ha have much to do with that um, other in the scope of my career. Um, so, I, you know, I love Ted Lasso. Everybody that's around football loves Ted Lasso. We need to be goldfish, and uh, I think they did a good job of that this week and just coming ready to go. We have a lot we can get better at, um, and the, I think the team's in a great place because I think they're confident and they see the talent but they know hey, we can be a lot better than we were today. Couple more, Coach. What did, uh, we can ask Casey, but what did he tell you he saw on that interception? Uh, you know, in the second half, we moved the pocket a little bit, and I think that helps him sometimes. We got some tall linemen, and I would guess that maybe he just didn't see the guy. They dropped eight on that play, um, so they dropped into coverage, and he had time. and. I was watching the route develop, and that's where the ball was supposed to go. Uh, he could have put it in a window, and um, I don't know if he was trying to throw over him or didn't see the guy, but uh, yeah, that's a big play. Uh, Coach Osborne told us every single week we got to be a more physical team, we got to play better than the other team on special teams, we got to win the turnover battle. We're 0 2 in trying to win the turnover battle, and uh, that's one of the major things that needs to get fixed. On Thursday, you liked where your team was at, but were you, now that it's over, were you worried about this week and just how it was going to play out, and are you glad to kind of move into a more normal format now? Yeah, uh, the kids still came and gave effort at practice, but you could see that, uh, I think the right word is they're just a little off. Um, and I think that's natural. Um, you know, we had a couple of our leaders down this week. Uh, I think we'll get them back real soon. We had some sickness going through the team. So it was just a weird week. Um, that, please don't take that as an excuse. It was just a weird week. I think any you guys have all flown overseas and been kind of run down, and um, that's just what it felt like. But the effort at practice was great. And um, I don't know if that had to do with why it took us a little while to get started on offense. But um, yeah, we got a, more of a normal week now. So we'll be back on schedule. What did you see from them at halftime? I mean, it had to be kind of a frustrating game for the offense, only 23 snaps or whatever. What, what was, like, the reaction of the players? How did you see them? I give them a lot of credit. I had a great talk with uh, with their coach, with Coach Schweigert after the game uh, and before the game. Uh, Bubba, what, what a great guy. Um, and I think he does an unbelievable job uh, with what they have. Uh, they're going to have a chance in every game like we do. I think they're really well coached. Um, our kids did a great job. You probably didn't notice a lot of the gadgets and things because our kids did a great job keeping their eyes and being disciplined and not giving up one of those. Um, we, we, you know, we knew we needed to get ahead so they, they couldn't milk the clock, and we didn't. So we kind of played right into their hands. I, I don't think they could have asked for a better situation than tied at halftime. Um, and luckily, we came out and did what we were supposed to do in the third quarter. Otherwise, we'd have, we wouldn't have had very many snaps at all. You said the game didn't look the way you thought it would. What, what was the most different from what you anticipated? Uh, I, I, I hoped that we would uh, do what we did in the second half and the first half. And I hoped we'd get a, some more guys in at the end of the game. Uh, I hoped we made a few more dumb, a few fewer uh, dumb plays and, and give up plays. But the other team practices too, and, and some of what happened uh, – is credit to them. Some of the things are, are things that we can fix. Thank you.
Isaac, what was the, the conversation at, at halftime? Like, and, and maybe the emotions in that locker room, you get to take me in there a little bit. Um, you know, it was, it was business. Uh, we went in there and we knew we were doing exactly what we were supposed to do. And the game plan we put in was it was working and we just had to stick to our job. We were giving up things when we didn't execute our job well enough. So we just had, we knew we just had to keep doing our thing. How frustrating is it when they're not getting a lot of explosive plays except for that one, but mm -hmm. you can't get them off the field? Mm -hmm. it, is, it is frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you just got to put your head down, keep working, and just keep doing your job. Isaac, Coach called it a weird week, not as an excuse, but just in that you guys were out of your team coming back from overseas. What, what was that like from the players' perspective, just to get ready for this game? Yeah, it, it was a little weird. You know, you're on a different sleeping schedule. You got to catch up on your sleep. And it, it's, it was weird the first two days, but after those first two days, you kind of get back in your rhythm. How big was Garrett's just strip fumble to kind of get, get you guys going there? So oh, it's huge. We talk about it all the time. Defensive turnovers, it, I mean, it changes the courses, course of games. And we haven't done a good enough job this year in the past two games of getting turnovers, but him getting that one, is a, it was a good start. Well, what maybe would we as reporters not have seen that was challenging about their offense during this game? Um, you know, they, were, they did a good job. Um, executing their their scheme you know they came in and they started off with a lot of rpos and they knew we were going to be in a two high and they uh executed their their scheme pretty well do you feel that you guys shore some things up as the game went along and tackling it mm -hmm. looked a little more rough in the first half yeah it, it definitely was and again that comes down to guys doing their job and some guys you know not on that certain play but i thought in the second half we all did a really good job of tackling What's it um, mean for this team just to win a football game? It's been so long. It's been like a lot of months, right? Yeah, it, it's been a long time. It uh, it feels good. It's definitely something we want to get used to, you know. Obviously. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. before we bring a couple offensive guys in here at Nelson. All right, questions for Garrett. How good is that? Just that sack, force fumble feel. Ah, oh, they always feel good. I love uh, it's my my it's my job. So when I'm doing when I hunt, finally hunt down QB and get the ball out and help my team, it's kind of the epitome of what our, our position is supposed to do. So it's good. What did you want to get across to guys at halftime? You know, if they had that seven minute drive right before the break. Or what, what did you want to do as a leader? Um, just everybody needs to take a deep breath. You know what I'm saying? We we don't need to panic. Just keep doing our job. Um, I was telling, you know, I was talking to some uh, some people uh, last week with Northwestern. They were saying, you know, you were trying to go out there and win the game. You need to do the, you need to make the plays that you're trained to do to help us win the game. There's a difference. Um, and I didn't want anybody, I wanted people to learn from my mistake. So I was telling my guys, we don't need to panic. We need to breathe. We need to keep doing our job. There's nothing that we need to change. Keep running, keep no, doing what we need to do in the sense of running the ball, be physical. There's nothing, you know, that's how you win football games. So uh, just to mesh with those guys, keep them calm, keep, don't panic, keep doing our job, make the plays when they come to you. Garrett, there was kind of a similar rhythm to last week in that you guys got ahead 
by a couple scores in the third quarter and then gave it back. And then there was kind of going to be that, that time when somebody was going to take control. Mm -hmm. Did you guys notice that on the sidelines? And did you see any different reaction uh, this week than last? Um, you know, there are, I mean, there's rhythms of the game. Obviously, you can tell which momentum shifts and who makes plays and stuff like that. But in the sense of, like, identical to last week, no. Um, we know situational football in the sense of, you know, if they get a turnover, we have to go put out the fire to get the momentum back on our side and help the offense out. You know, we get a strip sack fumble, and offense knows they have to go out and score to keep that momentum going. Uh, with the back and forth as a team, uh, you know, new staff, young players, new players, just understanding that type of football and how to take over that game, not just winning, but taking over those situations, um, you know, with the rhythm of the game and just making our own rhythm, uh, how we operate as a team. That's kind of our next step as leaders is understanding those situations and how to talk to those guys of what's important during this time of the game or situation of the game. How was the week of practice and how was your confidence impacted by that opening loss? Yeah, um, like I said, I talked to some people. Um, I put a lot of it on my shoulders in the sense of um, I'm a new leader. Um, that was my first game as a leader, and you come out and do that. You know, I think Northwestern had 500 some yards, the most they had in two years. Um, you know, I, I personally, you know, didn't do anything to help our team win. Um, you know, splash plays, things like that. Uh, you, I, I, you know, I hope you guys know me well enough to take that pretty personally. So, um, understanding that that doesn't, I got a bunch of text mess messages and talked to people that that one game doesn't define me as a leader. That one game doesn't define this team as a team. This, that one play, that game doesn't define me as a player. Um, and that was really hard to work past that because, you know, obviously, um, work really hard and you know all the he's you know gonna do great and all that stuff and um just kind of understanding and that's what uh coach dawson told me uh the you know make the plays that come to you to help us win the game don't try to go and win the game really focusing on my job and the best i can do it and use my leadership as a weapon and not just and be a constant rhythm for those guys and not um get outside that zone in the sense of trying to do everything how long did it take you this week to work through that uh, it, it took a, it took a couple of days. I will admit it. Um, my, I cut those guys, you know, Buford uh, helped me out a ton. Um, he he hugged me and he told me he loves playing with me. He wouldn't want to play with anybody else. And that um, kind of, you know, it felt like the way the world was on my head. And I wasn't really Garrett. You know, I'm usually a pretty happy guy. I would like to think. And I was just um, just pounding around, honestly. Um, and he, you know, he grabbed me and told me that, and uh, told me he loved me, and it kind of got me out of that cr cloud in the sense of started talking to people and um, helped me a ton. Uh, you know, uh, I, I really appreciate him doing that, and the people that I talked to, I really appreciate them putting things in perspective as as a younger leader and um, as a as a leader on the defense and just understanding um, how things work. And like I said, just kind of putting things in perspective for myself as a player and as a leader. How close do you think you guys are to being the run defense you, you really want to be? Like, what are the maybe the last few things that you want to put in place? Yeah, uh, that X run that they had, obviously just cleaning up. We always talk about um, the X runs or just X plays that they have. Um, those little details, like I was talking to Miles, he was uh, being the edge there, and I'm coming down in a blitz or whatever, and um, he, he doesn't need to jump out to the QB. He needs to tackle the dive and just getting, your, getting eyes right pretty much in a long-winded version. Um, being a great defense, being an elite defense, you don't let those X plays happen. You just keep, like I said, a consistent rhythm, going out there making stops, only giving them, you know, one or two first downs, giving the ball back, doing your job, um, and just telling your players that. Um, just those things that we clean up. <laughs> like I said, um, new, new defense, uh, new guys, different pieces. You know what I'm saying? Um, getting figuring out how to play with each other, and uh, when you're on the field, how to make those plays and do your job. That was, I'm so proud of him. Hopefully, he shares it with me. I touched him too. It was great. Uh, no, I was, um, I was really proud of him, man. He, he did awesome. Um, that's like I said, that's our job. We got to go do that. So, gave him a big hug, told him I love him. I know it was the other side of the ball, but were you taking some stock of what Anthony was doing out there? And I, I assume you see that quite a bit. Uh, yeah, he's, he's the happiest guy probably in the world. He always smiles. He has the biggest 
goofiest smile on his face and I'd hug him and tell him I love him all the time. He's so happy to see me and I'm happy to see him. So, um, th yeah, that guy is incredible at football. So, uh, keep doing that. I think we'll be pretty solid. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.
Grant, and then uh, still expecting Casey after Anthony in here. Uh, a couple guys going to the back, Ernest Hausman, James Knight back there. So. All right, questions for Anthony? Anthony, can you walk through that 46-yard run? Uh, the touchdown line in the third uh, I just really just stayed patient, uh, followed my blocks. Um, eventually, I had bust, busted to the outside, and I just, you know what I'm saying, ran, ran all the way to the touchdown. Your patience, you, you seem to have that. Is it, was that something you learned, or just naturally have always had? Um, I mean, it's, it's obviously something that I've learned, you know what I'm saying, along the journey. But, you know what I'm saying, just along the journey, just learning to, you know what I'm saying, really. You know what I'm saying? Take that, take that into action. You know what I'm saying? It has came along with it. What was your level of concern with the team at halftime? Uh, I just, um, I mean, uh, I mean, just start starting the first half, I just feel like we started very, very slow, slower than, you know what I'm saying, what we could have. And, um, I mean, uh, it's just I just feel like I just feel like it's just little minor minor little mistakes and you know what I'm saying just little things that um, you know what I'm saying we need to take into action you know what I'm saying starting the game um, you know what I'm saying and just really just um, you know what I'm saying just finishing drives and you know what I'm saying just things like that just you know what I'm saying taking care of the little things the intangibles and just you know what I'm saying um, you know what I'm saying staying together really. How important for you as a back is finding a rhythm, getting into a situation where you know you're getting carry after carry. It seemed like you got stronger when the consistency and delivering the ball came to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, just um, you know, what I'm saying, staying with my teammates. You know, what I'm saying, um, keeping everybody together, and um, you know, what I'm saying, really just doing my job and doing my part to, you know, or, yeah, like doing anything, anything to, you know, to help my team, and you know, what I'm saying, to, um, you know, what I'm saying, do whatever, whatever I need to do for my team. More comfortable with you this week as opposed to last week. Uh, I mean, I was a lot, I was a lot more comfortable with my second game, so you know, what I'm saying, just going out there, coming off that, um, the last game, you know, what I'm saying, my first, you know, what I'm saying. My first game, you know what I'm saying, um, you know what I'm saying, at Nebraska. So, um, you know, it was it was a lot more comfortable and, you know what I'm saying, uh, just, you know what I'm saying, better for me. Did you expect this level of success? Uh, or are you surprised? Um, uh, I'm not really surprised. Um, I mean, I just, you know what I'm saying, I, st I stayed down and, you know what I'm saying, all the work I put in, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know what I'm saying I knew I knew I could you know what I'm saying I knew I could do it so uh, just I just really just you know what I'm saying followed you know what I'm saying followed God about it and um, kept faith and you know what I'm saying trusted my work my work ethic and you know what I'm saying what I've always did. How did it feel for you coming out and seeing the fans and just being in this stadium for the first time? Um, it felt great honestly. Um, uh, all the fans was very exciting, really really exciting. And um, uh, it was it was it was really really a great you know what I'm saying great thing to, to you know what I'm saying play you know what I'm saying playing you know being in uh, Memorial Stadium. Does a game like this kind of cause you to reflect a little bit on your journey and and maybe you know at what point did it feel like this was a long way away that you were able to work back to this spot? Uh, honestly, I think about it all the time and you know what I'm saying the journey that I you know what I'm saying had and just looking back on everything man. It, you know what I'm saying? It, it really feels great just to, you know what I'm saying, um, went through everything and, you know what I'm saying, be back at the D1 level and, you know what I'm saying, playing like I am. Is there, you're, an old, you're older than AJ, obviously. Is there ways that you can help AJ Allen? Do you feel like you should help AJ Allen? Uh, yeah. I mean, any, any, chance, any, any chance I get to help AJ Allen, I will. Like, um, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's from, you know what I'm saying, reading the defenses, um, you know what I'm saying? Just staying on cue about anything, um, you know what I'm saying? Any any little thing that I can do to help AJ, I'm, I'm definitely gonna help him. And your, your head coach said he told you guys this can be a great team. It's not yet. Um, what, I mean, what's kind of your mindset about where this group is and, and what you, you mean, you've been a, you've seen talented guys throughout your career. What do you make of this roster and what can get done here? Uh, I feel like I feel like we have a lot of improving improving to do. Um, 
uh, I feel like I feel like um, you know what I'm saying. We we need we need to fix you know what I'm saying all the little the minor mistakes and you know what I'm saying just the little things that that is that are beating us and um, you know uh, just really really I feel like it's really just really about getting everybody on the same page for. Real. Uh, I mean, no, the O line, they they really, they really was blocking. Like, they really, um, you know, what I'm saying, made, um, made some really good blocks for us. And um, you know, what I'm I could, I couldn't thank them, you know, what I'm saying anymore. All right, appreciate it. Thank
here with Casey Thompson. I think we're done in the back over there too. So, a few minutes with Casey. Questions? How you feeling physically? Uh, I took a lot of hits. Um, just sore, but uh, I feel good. I actually was uh, struggling this week with a little cold or some type of little sickness. So. Um, throughout the week. So today I woke up on game day and it kind of all went away. You know, when the game starts, you feel fine. So uh, I felt good during the game, but like I said, I'm definitely sore right after. So I'll be sore tomorrow. The option uh, plays you guys ran. Um, how much do you guys work on that? Is that something that you guys do yeah, we a lot? Yeah, we practice that uh, every day. I mean, that's Coach mm -hmm. Frost, um, he's very big on running the zone read option. So sometimes we call it and uh, the defense end goes upfield. So they give us uh, a give look. Sometimes I hand it off. Uh, as you guys have seen, sometimes I pull it. Um, sometimes we call it, and uh, it's it's meant to look like it's an option, but it's really not. It's just a straight handoff. So we work on it every day, and that's something that we take pride in uh, on our offense in the run game for sure. Did you take one one hit kind of up high at the goal line? Um, yeah, uh, I took a hit right to my chin. Uh, I thought it should have been targeting for sure. Um, he literally hit me right on my chin strap. So good thing I had the chin strap, or I probably would have had broken jaw. Um, but yeah, my, my jaw and my chin sore right now. I thought it was going to be a targeting call. They, they overturned it. But yeah, it took a hit uh, to, to the jaw for sure on it. Hey, can you, can you go through that play, uh, third and 14, on the touchdown drive that put you up by two scores? You found Trey down the field. And mm -hmm. you, he seemed to really kind of go up and yeah. get that one. Yeah, I was, uh, I was very happy and glad that Trey went up and got that ball. Um, you know. We both said that we owe each other from the last game because uh, he had a couple of drops. I missed him a couple of times. So he really uh, went up in the air and attacked the ball at its highest point. That was a really good play. And uh, that ended up extending our drive. Um, so that was a big play that he had. I mean, that was coming off of first and second down where I took a couple of hits. Um, and like I said, the, the, the targeting call that they overturned. But um, it was really good to see Trey go up and get that ball. And uh, he's been working hard at practice and after practice, you know, getting some extra catches in and get on the jug machine. So that was a big play for us. And uh, we ended up going down and score, which ended up uh, you know, putting the game away. So that was a big big play on third and 14. How big was that drive to start the second half? Because I imagine it was a frustrating first half mm -hmm. when you only get 23 snaps. Yeah, I was going to say, we only had 23 plays, four possessions in the first half. Um, two of the four possessions we should have scored. And we had one touchdown, uh, one missed field goal. So, I mean, 23 plays is like a first quarter, you know, and that was a half for us. So, um, we didn't, I think our time of possession was like nine minutes or something at that time. And uh, North Dakota had the ball almost 20 minutes or 20 plus minutes. So, they literally, um, they literally doubled our possession almost the whole game and almost had more plays than us. So, honestly, for, for us to even be tie game and ahead, um, we were just trying to stay positive uh, in halftime. And, uh, you know, like I said, a better opponent, if they have, if they have the ball more plays and they have uh, more time possession, they probably would have been up on us. So uh, we just try to stay positive at halftime. And then we knew we were getting the ball come out in the second half. And uh, we marched right down the field. Uh, I think it was like a minute, 53 or two minute drive, something like that. Um, so that was a big drive for us. Anthony, a Grant running the ball like that, what does that do for you? Yeah, I mean, if we can run the ball like that all season, any of our running backs, if they can, we can stay ahead of the chains and get a run game going. We rushed for over 200 yards today, which is really good. Threw for 193 yards, so we, we try to stay balanced. Um, and uh, that's the best way to play, you know, because you get clock clock management, control the clock, also get a lot of first downs, and you get the defense tired. So help out the defense a little bit as well. But I thought AG ran the ball really well today, uh, made some big-time cuts. And uh, my favorite play was whenever he scored that long touchdown. He started off inside, and then he bounced it all the way outside and uh, kind of turned on the Jets a little bit, so it was really good to see that. Cross said he told you guys this can be a great team. It's not yet. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see as sort of those ingredients that need to come together still now and the weeks ahead? Uh, I mean, we're still we're still getting to uh, to work together. I mean, this is a, a team with like 30 transfers, 30 new players, sorry, between freshmen transfers, um, half of staff of new coaches, um, still rotating guys on offense. Um, new starters on defense, new starters on special teams. So, uh, I mean, it's good for us to uh, to get the win today, but I mean, I definitely think that uh, practice is one thing, but working together in the game is a whole different thing, right? It's going, going to battle and going to wars with, with guys who uh, you find out who you can trust and lean on. And, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, on offense, AG stepped up two weeks in a row, um, really like where he's at. 
uh, Marcus, Dre, uh, Omar came back today and uh, had some big plays. Alante Brown's made some big plays. And uh, last week it was funny. Isaiah uh, Garcia went up and made that first touchdown catch. I didn't even know he was in the game. Uh, I thought it was Alante. Honestly, I was looking at the defense, and then after the, the play, I saw Isaiah was celebrating. I was like, I didn't even know he was in the game. So we're, that was my first time ever throwing uh, a deep pass like that where he went up and got it. And think about it, that was in our first game. Um, you know, at practice, um, the receivers rotate and stuff, but we just, for whatever reason, we never called that play, and I've never thrown him that pass. Literally, our first time was in the game. So we're still getting reps as we go on the fly uh, in the game. So we're still working together. We're still new, but uh, we have to put it together um, very quickly. Uh, I think that in the second half, we were just, we were able to run the ball better, uh, get a lot of first downs, and uh, play better defense. So honestly, we just have to play four quarters of football. Thank you, Thank you guys.